Добрий день. Hello and welcome, Olga Tamanova with us, with you, and joining Ukraine Forum. And the aggression of the Russian Federation is still going on, and now we are going to speak about the situation in the Rivne region. We have Vitaly Kovan, the head of Kiev of Rivne Regional Military Administration, online with us. Um, good afternoon, good afternoon. So I would like us to start our conversation with the current situation in the region and uh, the winterization activities going on. Preparation for the heating season. Yes, it's true. Going through the heating season, uh, autumn and winter season is always the challenge that we start preparing to starting with the last day of the previous winter. And I can assure all of the audience that Rivne region has conducted this uh, preparation to uh, the 100% of its functionality and uh, the infrastructural system is prepared. And these warm days of autumn and the sunny days of summer enabled us to prepare very well indeed. So the social and the communal utility system is all ready for the heating season to start. Speaking in numbers, 200 and 900 and 39 facilities, 217 residential houses, 60% of all of the communal facilities have been provided with generators, and this, these numbers grow day in and out, and we understand that the generators and accumulators will be indispensable in winter and autumn as well as spring. In addition to that, we are also preparing and doing a lot of work for um, securing infrastructural facilities. And every day, the security is intensifying. And we are looking confidently to the beginning of the season. Concerning the objects of critical infrastructure, have you completed all of the repair works that you have been planning? Yes, all of the repair works have been completed. And from the budget of different levels, about 200 million grievances have been utilized. Uh, this is uh, the heating systems, the boiler rooms, and all of the measures uh, planned for the 1st of October have been implemented. You've spoken about providing generators. Can we say confidently that all of the hospitals have already been provided in uh, Rivne region with generators? Yes, in terms of uh, generator, in provision, we are moving along two tracks. First, we are provide for the facilities themselves, and secondly, we also accumulate the strategic supply of generators in the storages that refer to the regional military, military administration and to state emergency uh, service. So this algorithm proved very useful and helpful last year. So if a large infrastructural facilities, if they consume 400, 350 kilowatt of electricity and they remain, remained without power supplies, uh, units of uh, state emergency services would go there and connect them. It doesn't make sense to keep such um, uh, equipment because it's inefficient and very expensive, but the interim storage facilities, which are controlled by the military regional administration and the state emergency service of Ukraine, if the storage facilities are insured, then this is really very good indeed. Last year, we understand, Mr. Vitali, that the points of unbrokenness or invincibility that were um, equipped in all of the regions of Ukraine demonstrated themselves in a very good way. So what about Rivne region? Are you ready to unfold the activities in such points of unbrokenness? Yes, I can confirm that in Rivne region, 44,000 citizens took advantage of the services provided by the points of unbrokenness. They were not just unbrokenness points, but points of communication and information exchange and swap, because the services that at these points could uh, be utilized, starting with getting a cup of um, hot tea and charging your gadgets. This was all very well indeed. Nowadays, we have 296 such invincibility points equipped in Rivne region, which are prepared for full operations. Some of these points were specially equipped by the socially re responsible uh, businesses are ready to unfold these points within one to three hours because we have been working with the functionality of these points of un unbrokenness. We understand how quickly they can be unfolded.
So we understand the worse the situation with energy supplies uh, will get in Ukraine, the more reliable will be this unfolding of unbrokenness points. And we are very much hopeful that uh, of course, we will. Ho we are hopeful that energy uh, facilities will be working, but we are ready for the worst case scenarios. How prepared do you think the population is ready for winter, and how much are you helping the most vulnerable uh, groups of population, perhaps providing them with the chopped wood and some other forms of energy supplies? We have to recognize mm -hmm. that being aware and being prepared um, for winter, um, all of the activities for winterization, the majority of the Ukrainian citizens have taken place, have taken all of the measures in order to prepare well for heating season, and they took care of that during summer times. We see all of the uh, necessary supplies of chopped wood. And uh, the state forest agency is supplying all of the ne needs and wants of the population are met. And other kinds of solid fuel, we're talking about um, coal, peat. Our um, greatest challenge is to take care of uh, the most vulnerable groups of population. We have special meetings at local community levels, and that's exactly what we constantly reiterate here at Retic centers, uh, senior homes, the people particularly who cannot provide for themselves, they are in the focus of our attention. Mr. Vitali, we know that Rivna region has become a shelter for a lot of uh, housing and hosting a region for a lot of IDPs. So what is the situation like in the fields? How many IDPs are you hosting nowadays? And what problems are you faced with? Since the beginning of the full-scale invasion, Rivna region became the second home to 80,000 internally displaced persons. As of now, we have about 50,000 IDPs remaining in our region. And we take it as a new batch of IDPs to our region. So these are new residents to the population of our region. They have adapted well, and I thank them for staying with us. They're trying to find employment, especially the ones that um, are renting houses, flats, rooms. And we can see that they are adapting very well with the local communities. People are going to school. Um, their parents are joining the labor force. And in terms of medical personnel, about 140 Medical personnel out of the IDPs are right now employed within the medical system and infrastructure of the whole region, and some of them are highly professionals who have amplified our medical system and have raised it to a level higher. In every area, there are very strong, potent specialists, both communal workers, teachers, true professionals in every area of expertise. Thank you. We have some questions for in the studio. Good afternoon. I'm from Ukrainform. In the region, there are 52 communities out of 64 that have allocated funding to equipping and protection of the borders and taking the circular uh, security and defenses around settlements and villages. Is the same being provided uh, for in the next year's budget. And the second question is about Mr. Tretiak, because uh, the court denied his appeal um, about appeal against the decision taken previously concerning dismissing him from his job. So do, how do you think it will affect the uh, city? The city is remaining without the mayor. There are, of course, local council representatives. But how impactful do you think it will be on this whole situation in the city? Thank you. Thank you for your questions. Indeed, we have had a very successful experiment concerning establishment of uh, the security budget at the level of the regional budget. Let me remind you that 64 communities had their own um, town hall meetings 
in 2023, and they decided that um, establishing the borders with Belarus is not the matter for, of concern for, of the six communities along the border, but it's a matter of concern for all of the communities, and 23 capable communities allocated money. It's 364 million of Ukrainian grievances um, as part of this defense budget. We provide for all of the material aspects of the defense garden forces. So this has been a very active year concerning um, ramification of the fortifications within the region. As for the next year, we are right now processing the needs. And in the nearest future, we will understand the support that we will get from the state budget earmarked for this area, and if need should be, then in the nearest terms we will be convening representatives of local communities, and at this point I would like to extend my gratitude to uh, the local councils and to territorial community representatives. There have been special sessions in communities, and uh, the decisions were unanimous, so there was this unity to be able to withstand such challenges. So. We will definitely be, do, be able to do it always in unity and in harmony, because number one for us is to achieve victory. Concerning your second question, let me assure you, in terms of the heating system, um, this situation is not going to impact it, because the uh, structure of authority in any kind of a region has to be based on the principles of sustainability and seamlessness. All of the utility system in the city of Friedland is being prepared and works to 100% uh, of its potential. So right now we have a regional center working very well indeed. We do not see any disruptions. We don't see any shortages in the budget. Therefore, the city council and the secretary of uh, the executive commission are sure that everything will be okay during this heating season. And Mr. Vitali, one more question concerning the educational process in the region. What is the specificity of it this year? Have you managed to make sure that all of the educational facilities could work on offline? Yes, let me remind you, we have 229 kilometers with Belarus and the so-called 40-kilometer area of danger, dangerous area near this border. And due to that, this hasn't been, this has stopped us from being able to enable 100% offline format for all of the school children and educational institutions to revert to. Basically, right now, across the whole region, Offline format is implemented for the prevalent majority of schools in some of the institutions. Because of the great number of pupils, uh, there is a mixed form. Some of the school children have to go and study in shifts. Some of them study online, others study offline. But overall, we have the sustainability of the educational process in place. Children are already familiar with, with this and are used to it. So. Uh, the territorial communities are providing for the sustainability of this process, and local authorities have been helping with that. Thank you very much indeed for being with us. Let me remind you, Vitaly Koval, the head of the Riedma, Rivne uh, Regional Military Administration, has just been with us, and the next our briefing will take place at 13.30. We'll be talking about the current situation in Chernigiv region. Let's work towards gaining victory and supporting our security and defense forces. Glory to Ukraine.